Hello, fellow harp tone junkies. Coming right up, I'm going to play a bluesy version of the ballad You Don't Know What Love Is in the key of F minor on a 16-hole chromatic tuned to the key of C. And I got two objectives here. First one is to woodshed an arrangement on the melody that involves a lot of octaves, and double stops, and warbles. You know, the kind of techniques typically associated with blues chromatic harp playing, stuff you might hear Little Walter or George Harmonica Smith or Kim Wilson do on a tune like this. And the second objective is to see what kind of harp tone I can achieve by just running a microphone into my iPhone and using various combinations of audio apps to achieve particular effects. So I'm going to get to it right now, play the melody for you, and then after the melody, I'll discuss the technical details. So there you have it. Let's talk a little bit about the um, recording approach I took here. This was a live in-studio recording with me, my harmonica, a microphone on a mic stand, running into my iPhone, uh, where I had a bunch of uh, different audio apps running in a signal chain. And that's how I got uh, the sound I got. It ended up being a lot cleaner than the sound I originally sought. I have another session I did on the tune Willow Weep for me where I was able to get a dirtier sound that I liked and I'll be presenting that in uh, another session further on down the road. So let's describe the signal chain itself. That signal chain begins with me, Randy Weinstein, chromatic harmonica player. I'm playing a Suzuki SCX-16 chromatic tuned to the key of C. Uh, it's a four-octave IE 16-hole model. The microphone I'm using is a Shure MV88 Plus digital microphone that's uh, built specifically for iOS, but I think it, it also works for Android as well. Um, it's kind of pricey, but um, I'm really uh, quite satisfied with the sound. And uh, it's really portable. It's As you can see, it's about the size, if it's in the palm of my hand, and I have kind of small hands. 
Um, and um, it's also really nicely packaged. So you can see, like, here's the carrying case it comes in, and that can very easily be fit into a backpack. So it's, it's truly portable, and I've used it for um, a few field recordings so far and have had um, good success with it. As far as miking technique goes, I started trying to cup the mic, but that just didn't work at all. So I mounted it on a mic stand, and I stood about a foot back from it. The advantage of that um, approach is that it allowed me to do some hand vibrato stuff, and you can hear a little bit of that, of that in the recording. I also attached the phone to the mic stand using a standard uh, phone mounting device. That enabled me to efficiently operate the recording console while I was doing the recording. So the band was created from an app called iRealBook. It's a virtual fake book, and you can also generate accompaniment for any of the songs in the fake book. So pulled up You Don't Know What Love Is, set it to a slow jazz ball ballad style, went over to the mixing panel and set the piano part to be Leslie organ and set the bass part to be a organ as well. So then I would have the effect of like a B3 organ bass pedal board. Um, and then set the drums to drums. Then said I wanted to, when I generate the accompaniment, I wanted to create an audio file. I saved it in WAV format, and I saved it out to a app called AudioShare. AudioShare has a sister app called AUM. They're both made by a company called Chimatica, which makes a lot of really great audio apps for the iPhone. And AUM is a digital audio workstation. It's like a recording console. You got a bunch of tracks. All of those tracks can have audio sources. Those audio sources can be pre-recorded files, and you can pull them in directly from AudioShare without having to do any kind of convoluted importing or sharing or yada, yada, yada. It's super simple, very straightforward. Um, you can also have a, another iPhone app, like a synthesizer app as an audio source, or you can uh, record from a hardware microphone, which is what I did here for the chromatic harmonica. Um, each of those tracks, on each of those individual tracks, you can set up your own signal chain specific to that particular track. So that's how I got my fake pedal board assigned to uh, the harmonica track. Each of those tracks can then be set at um, various uh, volume levels, and those can all be routed into a mixing track. You can then uh, opt to, to record any uh, number of those tracks so that they actually can then be output to an audio file. And all of those audio files get very conveniently stored in a folder inside of, guess what, Audio Share. So uh, that package works together quite nicely. So what we're looking at now is the files panel inside of AUM. And at the top, you see all of the various AUM projects I've created. Among them, you don't know what love is. The projects files contain just basically all the uh, configuration settings for the project. And then below that, you see the recording section, and uh, those contain folders of audio files. So the audio output for all of your projects is organized into these nice folders. And uh, however many tracks you decided to actually have uh, individual recordings of, you, you can add those to those folders automatically. AUM does it for you. And that's all very conveniently and efficiently stored inside of AudioShare. Now what we're looking at is the band track. In this particular case, the audio source is, the, is a file player, and I just pulled in the track that had originally been generated from my real book and sent over to AudioShare. Now it's really easy to pull in here, and I put on a track, and 
Notice that uh, I'm not using any effect. So this has no signal chain. This is just being directly routed to the output, which is mix bus A. And you ask, well, what is mix bus A? And we'll, we'll find out very shortly here. Okay, so now we get to the harmonica channel and its signal chain. And it gets slightly complicated. At the very top, you see that the uh, input is the microphone. That is the Shure MV88 Plus that I've been using. And then I run that through three different effects, which are basically three different audio apps that you can um, essentially plug in to AUM. The first one is actually native to the AUM app itself. Um, it's called uh, Saturator, and it just creates, it just saturates the sound. What I found is it gave it more presence and warmth and depth. So uh, I didn't go crazy with it, but it, it uh, just gave, put a little more butter on the sound. Then, after I'd saturated the sound, I ran it into an equalizer app. That is AUFX Peak Q, and it's essentially an equal. You know, it's an equalizer, um, and uh, they have many presets. And the preset I used was called Acoustic. That um, app is also created by Chimatica. And then the last step in the signal chain was um, some reverb, which I got from an app called AUFX Space. And uh, they, too, have several presets in there. And I used a, a basement preset, mixed it, um, you know, moderately, low to moderate level. And that's kind of my pedal board for this uh, particular project. And, you know, just to reiterate... Um, I was trying different things and I just wasn't getting the sound I liked with kind of more more dirty, dirtifying stuff. So uh, I kind of backed off and went with this for now. But I've got, um, but stay tuned. Um, so again, this guy, like the band, is running into this audio bus. And we'll talk about that next. So we're at the end of the road now. We are at the audio bus channel. And it functions like kind of a master mixing channel. Uh, recall that we ran the fake ancient organ combo through Audio Bus A, and we ran the harp through Audio Bus A. So Audio Bus A is the input here, and uh, then we're outputting this into you know a sound file that's stored, as we said before, in Audio Share. Um, you would have the option to put some additional effects here to get. Uh, some kind of fake room sound, but I just chose not to do that on this go round. So that wraps it up. We're done. If you're still here, that's kind of amazing. Uh, and uh, I thank you for listening. Bye. <laughs>